Over the last couple of generations, I think we can all agree that AMD have just generally been ahead of Intel. It's not to say that Intel have not released some good processors. The 265K is very popular with gamers, the 285K is also pretty damn good, but overall AMD have made a lot of very good bets early on. Zen 2 and the shift to chiplets, of course, X3DV cache, and just the overall architecture of Zen has just continued to evolve and improve. And in this video, I want to talk to you guys about some very interesting things I'm hearing about Serpent Lake, Titan Lake, and also Razor Lake. Because Intel's roadmap seems to be evolving quite rapidly and perhaps very impressive in the future. And this is only ever a good thing for us because as you probably are very aware, PC gaming is set to become a lot more expensive and AMD being the only player in town is just not good for us. With any luck also, Intel's foundries will continue to improve because a reliance on TSMC is certainly not very healthy for the industry. And well, I don't want to get into the whole memory stuff. So before we get into the newer things, I think it's important for us to get a better understanding of what's going on now with the refreshes that are going to release and also the next generation before we start to get into the later generations. By the way, this is also an article. So if you want to check out the written word where I go more in depth into a few subjects, you can of course check that out in the video description. With that said, let's firstly talk about the refreshes from both AMD and Intel. Now, in my personal opinion, and bear in mind, we've not seen the benchmarks yet, I really don't think that the overall state of affairs is going to change too much. The architectures for both the Zen 5 and also the Arrow Lake refreshes is basically identical, albeit certain things are being cranked up. You can see here on Overclock 3D, they've got a quite nice um, uh, table of some of the changes, and retailers are already starting to confirm some of these processes, like the 290K here. But let's talk about the 270K for a second. You can see that it's basically the same thing as 265K, but with four extra E cores. In general, Intel are using a few metrics to improve performance. Higher speed memory supports the 7200, higher clock frequencies on the E and the P cores. And like I said, certain uh, SKUs are also going to increase the core counts, uh, the E cores, it looks like. As for AMD, well... They have now confirmed the 9850X 3D. This has actually popped up, of course, in drivers, credit to video cards here. We're not certain about the 9950X 3D 2 and whether it exists, but for the 9850X 3D, it's the same thing as the 9800, albeit with slightly higher clock frequencies. For the 3D 2, it's going to be 2 uh, CCDs which benefit from X3D vCache. Now, I don't necessarily know how much of a benefit that's going to have for gaming, but overall, it's still going to be a very impressive processor. And for folks who certainly run certain applications, it's going to be very performant. As for the next generation, well, of course, we have Zen 6 and Nova Lake. And actually, Nova Lake is going to be very important, and there's a reason I'm talking about it, okay? So especially when it comes to the core configuration. So Hayes on Twitter actually has a small update uh, for the Nova Lake S. And uh, you can, by the way, I have covered this much more in depth. So I'm going to go over this quite quickly here. But um, let's just uh, zoom in a little bit for you guys. 16 P cores, 32 E cores, and 4 LP E cores. That's the highest end configuration. So that's two compute tiles. And these have BLLC. So each of the BLLCs is going to be 144 megabytes. So in the case of the dual configuration, that's 288 megabytes of extra cache, which is a lot actually. Now, they are also releasing a single tile variant of this, and that's going to be 8P16E for LPE. What I'm hearing is that the E cores are actually really good, but for the P cores, I'm hearing at least a 15% uptick in performance. I'm hearing that's IPC. However, from what I've heard anyway, that's probably not the variants which are based on BLLC. We'll have to wait and see on this. As always, it's quite difficult to know what benchmarks actually are true and what isn't. And also, is it a performance target and actually is it met or is it exceeded? Either way, I think these are going to be very interesting architectures and very performant. It is worth noting, though, that the dual tile variants, the BLLC versions, I'm hearing they're quite expensive. I've mentioned before that it's probably at least $1,200, US maybe more like $1,500. US um, Also, of course, one, they are only going to be dual, um, dual channel memory. So 
that's one thing to take at note. And also because they're a mainstream platform, you're not gonna have like two bazillion PCIe lanes. So it's gonna be beneficial for some people. However, if you need like a ton of NVMe drives, multiple GPUs or what have you, and obviously some applications do really like a lot of memory bandwidth, especially if you're running a lot of applications, it's not going to be a replacement for a HEDT platform, but it's going to be very interesting to see how Intel markets that. As for AMD, well, uh, AMD, I mean, this is an interesting one, 70% improvement in performance and efficiency. Uh, from what we are understanding, of course, 24 cores, 48 threads for Medusa. The IPC gains look really good. I covered uh, a couple of days ago, actually, the fact that the integer scheduler units are just completely changed. They've now got separate integer scheduler units. And basically speaking, I think Zen is going to be very impressive. The other benefit is that it's also going to retain the AM5 compatibility. So if you have, let's say, a Zen 4 based system right now and you want to jump to Zen 6, then you should be able to do that absolutely no problem. That's something, of course, that is not going to be the case with uh, Intel's Novalink because it's going to be an entirely separate platform. Now, why, why am I bringing all of this up? Well, it helps set the scene for Titan Lake, Serpent Lake, and some other things, and you'll see why in just a second. So, firstly, let's talk about Titan Lake. We actually should be talking about Razor Lake first, but Titan Lake is actually, I think, the one that a lot of people have a, a tons of confusion over. So let's let's talk about that. Now, what I'm hearing from my sources anyway is while the original plans was that Titan Lake was going to be a unified architecture, it is not anymore. Instead, it's going to be an evolved version of Razor Lake. Now, we'll go over what Razor Lake is in just a moment, but basically it is essentially a desktop product and it is a kind of an evolved version of Nova Lake, but we'll get into the specs in a second. Let's stick to um, to Titan for just a moment. So Titan, uh, so Titan Lake is uh, featuring an iGPU, which is an XE3P refresh. Uh, you've got 12 uh, execution units for the higher end configs, perhaps more. There's going to be big updates to the SOC itself. LPDDR6 or 5X support. I've had one person tell me it's only R6 and another one told me it's both, so I'm unsure which is true. And there's also going to be a new NPU. You can basically think of these, of, um, of uh, Titan Lake as, as I said, an evolved version of Razor Lake. There's gonna be some enhancements to the core. As I said earlier, a moment ago, there's gonna be a new NPU, changes to the SOC and so on. You can kind of think of it as like, uh, I was told it's almost like a tiger, uh, tiger Lake. It's not a radical reinvention. There's not gonna be anything major changed. It's gonna be basically iteration and a chip which is designed primarily for mobile use cases. So what exactly is Razor Lake, because that's the one that I've been, you know, hinting at for some, some time. Now, Intel can certainly shift a lot of goals, but to my understanding, the actual CPU configuration in terms of the number of P cores, E cores, and so on, is actually the same as Nova Lake. So this means there's 16 Griffin cores, which are the P cores, 32 Golden Eagle cores, and I'm also uh, four LP cores. I'm not 100% certain on the names of those, just to be honest with you guys. On the performance front, I'm told that there's a healthy double-digit IPC gain. Now, I don't know what the clock frequencies are. It's too early to talk about that anyway for any degree of certainty. But the aim is at least, let's say, a 15-ish percent IPC gain on the P cores. But the P cores, <laughs> it's hard to describe this, but they're not really the star of the show. I can't get an exact... I can't get an exact measurement of the IPC because I've heard a couple of different figures, but basically the Golden Eagle cores are the ones that are at least percentage-wise going to see a larger increase because those are the ones that are going to be so important going forward. Now, why are they so important? Well, yeah, um, I guess we have to go to Hammer Time, or should I say Hammer Lake? Yeah, Hammer Lake seems, again, according to what I'm hearing, to be the first unified core design. Now, I wanna stress that the timing for this is not gonna to be tomorrow. We're talking about a core which is, or a processor, should I say, which is not gonna release until at least 2029. 
but it could even slip a little bit later. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, so this is, again, a processor which is not exactly ready to be taped out and tested in physical silicon, you know, retail clock engineering sample kind of thing. This is like, yeah, <laughs> a long time away. Now, from what I'm hearing, Hamalik cores are basically um, being designed around the folks who are currently leading the e-core development. And Intel will still segment the cores, but rather than doing it how they are currently with, let's say, you know, the P cores and the E cores, you can almost think of it going more of an AMD-like thing. So how they're going to segment products and also the cores themselves, obviously the actual core count slash cluster sizes will change because, you know, they still need to segment the market somehow or another, right? But there's also going to be instruction uh, instruction set and feature libraries which will change the actual cache configurations, like, for example, L1, L2, data sets. Basically, a lot of different stuff on the chip can be tweaked and adjusted. And this is not, you know, the, the best way of thinking about this, honestly, would be something like AMD are doing right now with the Zen line of processors, like Zen 5, Zen 5C, and so on and so forth. So what about SMT? Well... I don't have an answer about hyper-threading. One person told me that it's coming in to mainstream, but they seemed a little uncertain. It does seem very likely it's going to be included on server products because Intel themselves have kind of mentioned about this previously in our recent product from them, but I honestly don't know. There are certainly benefits of hyper-threading, and obviously there's some benefits of not hyper-threading, and I'll leave it to you guys to argue about that. <laughs> comments below. I genuinely don't know. Um, it could be that Intel themselves have not decided this, but basically Hamalik will be the first unified design. And uh, yeah, it's based essentially around the e-cores. At least that's what I understand right now. But now, before I close out the video, I'm going to give you guys a little interesting thing that I've heard, and that's Serpent Lake. So Intel and NVIDIA have, of course, officially disclosed that they are working together to create various products. And uh, basically, this means an NVIDIA GPU and an AM, uh, sorry, an Intel AMD, an Intel CPU. And the first product that I've actually heard about is Serpent Lake. Now, whether or not this actually gets released, I genuinely don't know. But Serpent Lake is quite interesting. So back in the day, we actually heard about uh, Nova Lake AX. Nova, Nova Lake AX was actually for, well, Nova Lake, of course, but it was 8P cores, 16 E cores. This is leaked from Raichu, 384, uh, uh, 384 execution units based on XC3P. Now, Raichu isn't certain whether it's going to get released or not. In fact, it's possibly going to be dead. But I've basically heard that uh, currently Serpent Lake is in development. Now, what is Serpent Lake? Well, the NVIDIA GPU that's going to be used is likely a Rubin variant, or at least a close version of it. So Rubin, and so far, it's likely going to be produced on the TSMC N3P production. Now, of course, this could shift, and as you know, Intel themselves, I'm sure, would love to manufacture this thing, but I don't. I'm not so super confident about that. As for the SOC slash tiles and the CPU architecture, it's going to essentially be based on Titan Lake. Now, I don't know whether that's going to be a refresh of sorts or what changes are going to be made and the exact configuration of the CPU, but I'm told that it's going to be Titan Lake. Now, if you want an idea of exactly what this product is going to be, the best way of thinking about it would be, say, Medusa Halo from AMD or Strix Halo, if you're more familiar. And this is really interesting, not necessarily just from a competition perspective from AMD, but also there is, of course, a lot of potential here for some very interesting products, like, for example, well, not necessarily a Steam Deck, but a Steam Deck-like system, and that's to say nothing of, uh, well, let's just say mini PCs and laptops and blah, blah, blah. It's going to be very interesting. So, yeah. I um I'll be very I'll be very curious to see what AMD and uh, Intel and Nvidia are cooking up over the next couple of generations. With any luck at this point, the prices will start to come down because ultimately that's the thing. Uh, memory, you know, the rumor is that it's gonna depending on how you, who you believe, 
um, I think it was Sapphire, one of the uh, head guys over at Sapphire, so I've completely forgotten his name, I covered it recently in a video, they're saying it's going to be probably the second half of 2026, the prices start to improve for memory, others are saying it's going to be the latter half of uh, 2026, but, or should I say, perhaps even 2027, but ultimately, by the time the likes of Zen 6, and uh, certainly, you no know, Zen 7, and of course, you know, the likes of, uh, I don't know, like, Serpent Lake get released, prices, at least in theory, should be a lot more competitive. Anyway, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.